And tonight on a great, great American panel, he's a member of the Wall Street Journal editorial board, writer of the best of the web column at opinionjournal.com. James Taranto is back with us. She's a senior advisor at the liberal think tank, NDN, and that's Alicia Menendez is back. And he's from the Fox News show Red Eye. Andy Levy is here. How are you? Doing well. Thanks. I, I heard you wrote a book, but then you told me you didn't. I that. Rumors you just got done saying that Greg Gutfeld defends you sometimes. I never said that. So. <laughs> <laughs> I have two witnesses here. I didn't say he offends me. Uh, did I was muffly or I have no idea. I'm oh, thank man. you for backing me up. Oh, all right. Well, all right. So we got the issue of the photos. We've got the issue of the funeral. And then the president says, no, we can't we can't spike the football. And then he shows up for the first time at, as president at Ground Zero for Campbell today. Big rah-rah for the president uh, talking about all of this. You don't think it was a little like spiking the football? No, I think it was being perfectly acknowledging what this means to a lot of Americans. And I think it was heeding the advice of his national security team, which is clearly helping him walk the line on this. Walk, what, what, walk what line? Walk the line. There's, What's a the line? there's a fine line between over-celebrating and sending a message to the rest of the world that we do not understand their regional politics and appropriately acknowledging that this meant a lot to a lot of Americans. All right, it meant a lot to a lot of Americans. But who are we trying to appease with a 40-minute funeral aboard a, 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 an aircraft carrier with, a, with, you know, full Islamic funeral it, it, according to Islamic custom? Who are we trying to appeal to here? Who are we trying to appeal to? Or who are we trying to not make a situation? Who are we worse? trying to not make mad at us? Who are we trying to get to love us? Who's going to? Who's? I, who, what audience is he targeting here? I, I think he's taking the advice of his national security. But what, what, no, no. no but you think through this. Uh -huh. Forty-minute funeral, James. I don't 40 know. Forty-minute funeral. I think. Clean the body, translate it into Arabic, wrap him in a shroud. Come, what, Forty minutes. For a murderer, a terrorist, a lowlife? Well, but we also put bullets in his head and dumped him in the ocean. I don't call that appeasement. I, I, I call it that. an effort perhaps not to inflame things and die. Uh, inflame I'm who? Willing, Infl I'm, Tell me out here. Inflame who? Inflame people who... Uh, what? Inflame people that think like bin Laden? The ones that were celebrating... Or who might be tempted to think like bin Laden. I just, I, you know, I just, I'm just not upset by this funeral thing. I am bothered by the spiking the football comment. I'm sympathetic to the argument for not releasing the photos. I'm undecided on that one. But I think this saying we don't spike the football was a really crass thing to say. Because as my colleague Peggy Noonan wrote, this isn't about pride, it's about proof. Uh, and uh, people are asking a lot of questions. And uh, the president, he, he may be doing the right thing, but he should at least have respect for people who see it differently. Look, at some point, we have to stop caring about what homicidal maniacs what think, might think about what we do. Thank you. What offends me, you remember this cartoonist, Molly Norris? She, yeah. She's the one that jokingly suggested we have this draw Muhammad day. She's had to, as they call it, go ghost. She's had to change her name and move because she got death threats. Nobody seems offended about that, but we're offended about what people who already hate us are going to think. And as far as the pictures go, these pictures should be released now. As far as I'm concerned, where is Bradley Manning when you need him? I think we should let him out. We should let him out. Let him out for a day. Let him get the pictures and release them, and then throw him back in jail. That, that maybe maybe not a bad day. maybe not a bad idea. But what do you think? I think at the end of the day, the, these pictures will likely come out. We had birthers who wanted to see Obama's birth certificate, and even now that they have it, still believe he was born in Kenya. I don't think the photo. Is there really anybody who doesn't think Osama bin Laden's dead? No, I think no. he's dead. No, right. I think like, he's dead. So I, I just don't know what the big deal is. About you know what? I want, I want every other terrorist in the world to see what their future is is going to be like. Well, and the president says he doesn't want the photo of Osama to become this iconic thing. Why not? I don't want the iconic image of bin Laden to be him holding an AK-47 or with his cute little John exactly. Lennon glasses. I want the iconic image of him to be with a hole in his head. Not because I'm bloodthirsty, but so oh. that people will look at that and say, hey, maybe I shouldn't go into the terrorism Did you see business. the pictures of the other three, three people in this uh, house that were dead? Yeah, the ones that Reuters released. Right. Did that so offend us? I mean, to be honest, you go to the movies and you see a lot more. You watch Braveheart, a gladiator, and you're going to see a lot more blood. Yeah, I can't say that I was upset by them. Okay, uh, so then I, why are we going to be upset by this? You know, it, it, you're, you're, you said before, all right, we put a bullet in his brain, and those people that are going to be mad are mad. And it, I don't think they're going to care that we didn't give him a proper funeral. They, they're going to be mad that he's dead. And they've already threatened, a, you know, retaliation anyway. 
Well, I could argue this either way. I'm, I'm really undecided on this one, Sean. I'm sorry. I'm not going to push back too hard on this. I, you make a persuasive case. I think there's a case for that on the other side as well. And just as yes. I feel that we, this. You are too zen. The <laughs> lesson I learned from this is that um, we have um, no idea what the government is up to at any given moment. Uh, we did not know that this was happening. And likewise, right, can I, you think, say this? I think that we have to trust that same team when Will they're saying that there's a reason not to release these votes. What happened Sunday would not have happened but for George W. Bush's policies. I do not know, but I am happy to share credit because this one's a win for Team America. And Would I not don't have think happened it needs without Bush, right? Well, Leon Panetta said as much in yeah. an interview with NBC. He said uh, there, yeah. there, there were enhanced interrogation techniques, including that's it. Well, waterboarding That's where we involved. got the courier. That's where we got his nickname, and we took it from there. It wouldn't yes. have happened without Bush. And why can't the president admit that? You're his big supporter. I'm sure he will. Let's I'm press sure him he will. Let's you, you ask him. It's <laughs> he won't talk to me. He's too afraid to come on a real program that will ask him tough questions. I, just, I find it amusing that a lot of the same people who support Bradley Manning or who support Julian Assange no. suddenly are perfectly yeah. comfortable with this picture. Not it's a great point. Well, and, and I give the AP credit. Wait, we got to take a break. Hang on. Capacity. Uh, time to check in with Greta Van Susteren for a sneak. Where were you last night? I wanted to see you in South Carolina. I wanted to see if you could do 90 minutes straight. I, I and you did, and you did very well. I must, I must say, <laughs> you did you. a great job. You could do a 90-minute show. I, I, you know, in the early days, there were nights we were on for four or five hours. I can handle it. I, you know what? I'm suggesting that we start that on Friday nights, that you do four or five hours Friday starting night. at 9 o'clock. Okay. Friday okay. night. Followed by <laughs> a five-hour on the record. You bet. I, do you do it? I'll do uh, it. No, I, I think I get the night off. Anyway, <laughs> um, tonight we have a great show. Reverend Franklin Graham is here. Governor Huckabee is here. We have new information on what was seized uh, from bin Laden's uh, lavish mansion, the one where the Pakistanis say they don't know anything about it. And also, uh, we've got information about, did bin Laden leave a will? We've got that and much more. And I'm anxious to hear the rest of this discussion your panel is having on the uh, picture. What do you think? Release it or not? Uh, I think it's better off not to release it. And you can always release it later if you want to. But if we release it now and it's catastrophic because it's so provocative, we can't put the toothpaste back in the tube. And frankly, I don't have to see it. I've, I used to do murder cases. I mean, like, it's not going to do anything for me either way to see him dead. He's dead. I'm glad. And that's done. I want to see it. Greta, we're coming up in 18 short Ada, minutes. put it on a time capsule. <laughs> All right, more with our great American panel straight ahead. All right, we continue with our great American panel. Well, I was just asking you, because we had the Fox News debate last night, and uh, what did you think, and, and who do you think is the front runner for the Republicans? Well, I guess the best way to answer the question of what I think is I didn't watch it. I uh, and uh, I haven't really read much about it. it. It was, you know, this is really you the. You know who the candidates are. Yeah, is there this, any one person that you think might emerge as the uh, frontrunner? It's really hard to say at this point. I mean, I was at a dinner for Pawlenty a couple of months ago, and I was saying at the cocktail hour, uh, it's going to be Pawlenty by default, or his bumper sticker should be Pawlenty by default. That's basically the case he made. Uh, it's uh, it looks like a weak field right now, and uh, I, I think we're perhaps waiting for more of these governors to get in, like Mitch Daniels. Who or... would be the one candidate as a Democrat that you would fear the most? I've thought about this a lot, and it's a real mixed bag. I'm, I'm inclined to say Palenti, as you said, by default, but he doesn't scare me. Jeb Bush. Jeb Bush is the person who could get in that would terrify me. What do you think? What about Chris Christie? Even though I, he, I know he said over and over again he's not going to run. He, I don't think he's going to do it. I don't think he has the Chris regional Christie, strength to do it. What if it was Marco it. Rubio and Chris Christie? I, I think Marco Rubio has also been very clear that he won't do it. And I think the challenge for Marco Rubio is that he's brought onto the ticket to help win Florida, to help win southwest states. But, and but I think the, his current position on immigration makes him untenable as untenable. a VP candidate. He, 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 for the votes that he is intended story. to bring on. It's amazing. It's an amazing story. He's clearly a brilliant guy. Yeah. But I think he has certain policy positions that do not act. Does ticket. Biden get dumped from the, the ticket? No way. No way. No way? No. James? I don't know. It could happen. No? Uh, I hope not because he's been so entertaining. Yeah. One of the things we're talking about in a parliamentary system, you know, people can, well, Winston Churchill, probably the greatest example. After World War II, he's dumped and people can make political comebacks. A lot of people didn't think Bibi would ever come back. Do you think that could happen to some politicians maybe that get into this race? I don't think so. I just I think the biggest winner, the two biggest winners last night, I thought, were President Obama and heroin. I thought they were clearly the two biggest winners. I think the smallest loser was probably Herman Cain, especially after watching the focus group that you all did after. Why do you the, think Obama was the biggest? Because winner? I just think he had to be watching that. Just I, I mean, look, I was watching that going. None of these guys are going to be. I can't I picture any wrong. of these guys think, being president. I honestly think. I, could you, you picture any of those this, guys being president? Beating him in a general election? I just couldn't. I, could, I will take any 
any of the five over I, I know, this current I, president. I know you will, but I, I just don't see America voting for any of those five five guys know. over but President Obama. I want to contradict Andy on one point. Uh, there's no way Obama was watching that. I mean, if I was too busy to watch it, the President of the United States well, was oh, too busy. I'm a junkie. <laughs> I watched it. I watched it. I, I was there. It. I loved it. <laughs> All right, coming up, he's one of the most controversial coaches in the NFL, Rex Ryan of the New York Jets. Coming up straight ahead. He is one of the most talked about coaches in the NFL, and in just two seasons at the helm of the New York Jets, Rex Ryan has led his team to two consecutive AFC championship games. And I recently sat down with Rex to talk about his new book, Play Like You Mean It, Passion, Laughs, and Leadership in the World's Most Beautiful Game. Take a look. It's an honor to meet you, Coach. How are you? It's nice meeting you. I'm you, doing great. You know, I watched all the hard knocks, and boy, you're you're tough to work for. You're, uh, <laughs> but the, the players love you. You're having a lot of fun, a blast. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't think so. I think um, I'm an easy person to, to uh, get along <laughs> with, and all that. I really am, and and I enjoy it, and I respect. One thing, I respect all the guys I coach. I respect all the, you know, the coaches that coach with me, and and all that kind of stuff, and and really. I think it's easy to, to play for me and, and things. Maybe I know there's a time every every once in a blue moon I'll I get a little upset, but very very rarely. No, but you're also having fun. All the players have said, and I've 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 met them and I've interviewed a number of them, and they all say the same thing. They want they love playing for you. You bring the best out of them. You're passionate about it in every way. Um, I guess the, it, it, first of all, you came so close. I love the fact that you tell everybody we're number one in New York and we're going to win the Super Bowl and we're going to be dominant for the next ten years. Right. And people take you on all the time because you 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 expect to win. I do expect to win, and you know what? I've been doubted all my life, but I'm sitting here in front of you today mm -hmm. because uh, I overcame a lot of different things. Um, you know, and but I'm confident not just in myself, and, and sure I'm confident in myself, but I'm confident. In, in the men that are, you know, on our football team and, and the coaches I coach with. Um, I really, I've enjoyed watching Mark Sanchez in the two years he's been in the league. I think he's really grown into what you predicted he'd be, a franchise quarterback, and you can't be a competitive team and get to the Super Bowl unless you have one. What did you, what did you see in him early on that, that well, really convinced you? First off, it wasn't just what I saw. It's what Mike Tannenbaum, our general manager, you know, we had actually had, uh, Woody Johnson down for this private workout. He's, we had, he's the owner of the, the Jets. Right, absolutely. We had our offensive coordinator, Brian Schottenheimer, there. Our quarterback coach, Matt Cavanaugh, uh, you know, he was there as well. And we put him through, an, uh, you know, a grueling workout. I mean, really, they, every pass known to man, you know, that he did, and he was so accurate. And the thing that impressed me more than anything, though, besides his physical abilities and all that, was the fact that he had 24 receivers out there at his pro day. And there's other top prospects that might have had just two guys at his pro day. And I thought it's, it spoke volumes about who Mark was. Um, I thought there was something interesting you said. You, you insist that your players do uh, interviews. Mm -hmm. But if they do an interview, they got to mention two players and one coach. Right, that's in true. In every interview. Right, that's what I like to, you know, like I'm never tell a player what he can and, and cannot say, mm -hmm. but I, I will say this, I encourage him, hey, just whatever you do, just mention two of your teammates and one coach, because I know when, when somebody says something good about you, whether you're a player or a coach or whatever, you know, like that, you feel like King Kong, I mean, you, you're on top of the world, you really right. are, and I think that's what, maybe it's a little thing that we do for team building, mm -hmm. it's too easy to do, we're doing the right thing, and at the end of it, you know, they all start coming together, and and the real challenge is, is when we're in the playoffs and we're saying, okay, now you got to step it up to four teammates, one coach, and somebody else in the organization. And the guys are are great about it. You know, they, uh, you know, they'll they'll get a uh, cook in, they'll get whoever in. You know, and it's just. It's a neat thing. Maybe we pick up a player from, you know, that we claimed off of waivers from Dallas. Well, they get him. I got the new kid in. You know, they're proud of it. And eventually, it just, that, that locker room just feeds itself. You are best known. And you, this is a lot about what your book's about. Play like you mean it. Passion, laughs, leadership. And it's not just in football, but it's really in life, too. Right. I love the fact that, you know, you're about to go into war against, you know, Peyton Manning, who I think is one of the greatest quarterbacks ever. And you believe Absolutely. that, too. I, no, he's, no he's unbelievable. Yep. Tom Brady. Same thing. Same Get thing. All right, yep. your buddy Tom. Uh, Belichick, another great coach. And, you know, you're willing to just go out there and know we're going to win this game. And, well, you know, back-to-back -back on the road, 
you beat both those teams. Right. But you but you, you you've taken shots at these guys in the press and enjoying every minute of it. What what is the method here? You want to get in their head? Well, sometimes that's the method, but other times it's just what I'm feeling. You know, deep down in my heart's what I believe. And sometimes it is. Like when I when I said that it's gonna be about Bill Belichick and I, and that's it. Whoever is the better coach that day. This is probably a stupid question. You're gonna win the super because I'm pulling for you guys to win the Super Bowl. Right. And I predicted you'd win last year, so I was right there with you. Is the, but this year is the year. I believe so. Why? I really what's, do. What, what's the final? Well, I, I think number one, we've been in the same system for three years now, so we ought to be around our peak. You know, as far as hey, this is the time. Uh, we're the only team in the NFL to go to back-to-back -back Final Fours, mm -hmm. so. You know, anything less than the Super Bowl is going to be a huge disappointment. You know, uh, the fact our quarterback's entering his third year, usually a huge step up from your second year to your third year. And, and we know how to win. We know our formula for success. And so it's not that we're teaching new ways of, of doing things and all that. We just got to, you know, go out and do what we do and do it a little bit better than we've done. And, and I think we're, we're all in for it. We have to improve in the red zone, especially our red zone scoring on, on offense. And then we got to, quite honestly, we have to play better at home. Yeah. And, and, and there's no reason we shouldn't I, have I mean, a dominant win, team at home. Yeah, I mean, you win on the road all the time. I mean, you're winning against, in, uh, against Peyton when he's home. You're winning against uh, Brady when he's home. Those right. are not easy things to do. Uh, you didn't vote for Obama, did you? Because this is a political show. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. When have you ever been silenced before? I've never seen this. This is new. You know new what? Ground. Hey, I can't win one way no, or the other. that's all right. I'm just... <laughs> all right, Coach, I love the book. Great to see you. Big fan of the Jets, and I wish you the best this season. Thank well, you. Well, thank you. And that is all the time we have left this evening. As always, thank you for being with us. Let not your heart be troubled. The news continues. Greta standing by as she goes on the record, and we'll see you Monday night. Have a great weekend.